Yep. Working on the Helsinki Sanomat app? Or? Uh, Ilta Sanomat, Huutonet, and Oikotie okay. are things I've been involved in. Cool. Okay. Uh, talking about React programming. So yeah. Take it away. So uh, software is eating the world. Probably you've heard that sentence a couple of times. In fact, software is eating Sanoma right now, and that's what we're talking about. Um, but there's something that is eating software, and it's spreading uh, like fire uh, recently, like let's say last 10 years or something. And what is that? And that happens to be asynchronous programming, which opposed to synchronous, where you have computation as a sequence of steps everything very predictable and linear. Uh, instead, you have multiple events and computations happening simultaneously, and there, there is no like linear order of computations. And th this is something that is, is growing. It's contagious because there when there are components of your application which are asynchronous, then the others that need to communicate with it soon are going to be asynchronous as well. It also makes a lot of sense uh, for today's software compared to like older computers and, and software where it was basically about getting an input, calculating these complex stuff and giving an output. Today we have notifications, events, and UI events, and analytics, everything happening at the same time. So this is modern. And it also performs better for this situation where you have multiple events happening at the same time. If you would do it synchronous style, you would have to do some blocking, do some waiting, and that would uh, lose performance as compared to letting things happen uh, simultaneously. Callbacks are one type of tool that you can use for solving asynchronous um, programming, but like I mean here, basically like the typical example of JavaScript callbacks, um, but they have problems. They, they feel like this clumsy tool uh, especially for error handling, you have to give the error as like a return value and things like that. But also for these situations where you need to combine uh, different responses, for instance, you have two requests and you need to join them. There might be a raise condition. One of them might not even return. And this in callback is quite complicated. There are other approaches, but here I'm today to talk about Reactive X, which is, in my opinion, the best. Uh, solution for asynchronous programming. Um, yeah, my name is Andre, and I've, I'm a consultant of yours uh, in Futurize. I've done two apps um, using R Rx, one of them Hutonet, the other one Oikotie. I've also been quite active in the Rx open source community, written some blog posts, and I've given like. Uh, uh, I've built an online tool as well in talking to the Rx creators and it's been like I've been doing it whole time now. Everyone in this room has done reactive programming because you've done Excel of course and Excel is a typical example of reactive programming. What is it? The core idea is that um, cell B uh, changes whenever cell A changes. It's something basic you've done quite a lot. Now this is quite differ different than like typical imperative programming where you might handle A, you might have like a ca class for A and then after A changes you need to go and explicitly say like B, change yourself according to this and it in reactive programming in Excel style it's, it's the opposite. So A has no idea whatsoever of B or C, it, it just exists by itself. And B also has no idea whatsoever of C, which actually depends on it. Um, but on the other hand, B uses A. So that's, that's the core idea, and it's, it's nothing beyond that. How would you go about building this in programming? One uh, basic way is to use the so-called observer pattern, where there is this thing, uh, the observable, let's say a cell in, in Excel, and it can have subscribers or observers and whenever this cell changes, it notifies its, its observers. That's one basic way. And actually, that is what Rx is. It, in, in the core, it's just this observable with an observer. It's, it's a library for doing the observer pattern the right way. And if you zoom into this blue thing that you saw, it looks like this. It's a value that changes over time. It cannot get simpler than that. 
it starts as seven, after some time it changes to three, and it's just a stream of events of this thing changing over time. And this can be observed. And how can it be observed? If you think about a cells A, B, and C, um, you have the cell A represented as a stream of things happening, and you apply a function on it, and you get an another thing which is observable, this cell of yours with this values changing over time. And what's interesting is that this uh, cell A is immutable in the sense that once I create it, um, I don't go and say like, A, hey, you're going to get a new value um, or, or you're going to like behave differently, but I just create a new stream out of this A, which is called B. And, and this is probably what's happening behind <coughs> the scenes in, in Excel. Now let's say we want to do something a bit more advanced. Uh, instead of just having calculations like just typical math, you want to do a request and a response. So let's say cell A has some input that you just type, and cell B is searching in Wikipedia for that uh, string, and it gets one of these entries of Wikipedia, and cell C just checks if cell B has like eight characters or more. How would this uh, be? You can't really do this in, in Excel. I don't think you can do requests or like, if you, if you want to say like, um, the requ the response of uh, the cell B has to come two hours after I put the input. Can you do that in Excel? You cannot do that. So there's these limits, and it, it would be nice to get this concept of Excel and apply it in other places. Um, this is a bit what we want to get then. We want to uh, type like REA, and we want to get another stream of events, this B. B uh, observing this A, and it will be making this, um, these, these, response, uh, th these requests to Wikipedia and getting these, these results. And then we check C will not uh, change anything, or, or B will not change C, but C is just observing whether B has eight characters or more. And now for some demo time. Uh, yeah, so this is a cell A. B and C. If I type R E, then I get Republican. A and as you see, there was a bit of um, uh, waiting there, so it wasn't like exactly on at the same time as you are used in Excel. That was not R X, okay? Not me. That was him. <laughs> um, yeah. So it it whenever you input, it gives you. Uh, it, it does this request in Wikipedia, and it shows in that field. I expect to see something soon. Can't really demo without showing anything on the screen. You want me to replug? Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> don't touch, don't touch. Okay, here we go. Yeah, um, so like let's say, yeah. Um, how does this work behind the scenes? Um, so we have this cell A, which is a stream of events of whenever the, the, the key of the keyboard goes up. And then we have the stream B, which gets A as input and pass that through a function. And we could do either e even other stuff, like we could, um, I hope, People at home can't see the code, by the way.
thought I'd restart, but the cycle of the power of the capturing card in the total, but not really got to do that. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Hopefully we stay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we could do some. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Okay. Okay, now um, let's go back to this part. Uh, the, the B cell changes according to and C changes according to uh, uh, B, but we can do even more interesting things. We can say that C, instead of sh showing true or false whether the field has eight characters, uh, we can do filter and then the C field will show only those words that are uh, C uh, more than eight characters. So for instance, Republican is, uh, but race isn't. And then it doesn't go to cell C. So you can do these kind of things with uh, reactive programming. Um, as you notice, these uh, operators, map, filter, flat map, they're very important. This was one of the tools I made for uh, working with Rx or just discovering how things work. Uh, I can show you a very simple case here, which is the map, which is basic Excel uh, behavior where one stream of events depends on the other. And the, the one you just saw, which was filter. Here we are only interested in um, values that are greater than 10. But there are many other operators here and the idea is that these sort of substitute for and while and if so they are the basic uh, functions for for asynchronous programming with rx extensions and they give you a lot of express uh, ex expressivity and you can do a lot and, and it's very important to know all these combinators they they can get quite complicated when you need to combine things and and it's, it's very important to get used to these uh, things. It can be also quite uh, like a learning uh, task. And here's another example just to get you accustomed to um, Rx. Um, this is a basic like suggestion of who to follow on let's say Twitter or GitHub and it's uh, pretty simple in the sense that if you click, click refresh it will refresh all these suggestions and you can remove these you probably think like there's nothing special about this, exa this example except how it's actually I implemented. You might think that when you click on refresh, the click will uh, have the responsibility of changing the data and cleaning the, the previous ones, but that's not what happens behind the scenes. What happens is that the refresh, uh, the re refresh clicks exist as a separate entity and they don't by themselves do something. Then th there is the cleaning of, uh, of the previous uh, suggestions and those depend on the, on the refresh clicks. So th we just say that the cleaning of the previous results happen when um, uh, the refreshes are clicked. So for instance here we have the refresh click stream and it just exists by itself and then we, we have request stream which just gets the refresh click as an input and passes it through some functions. And what's very interesting, I'm not going to go through the details of this but you can read it later in another introduction I wrote, um, is that this whole code is doesn't work uh, in a linear way so you can't just read this code and go like okay this happens and that happens and that happens. It actually doesn't go like that at all. What you have here is just declar declarations. You have var, var, var everywhere. And this is probably the, the highlight of, of how different this kind of programming is because you only have declarations, dependencies between them, and then finally you have down there uh, subscribe. So you have like 
I'm listening to this kind of stream of events and I'm reacting according to that. So it's a totally different way of uh, structuring your applications. And what I'm talking here is about actually duality. So it's a totally different way of thinking about programming, but in the end of the day it's kind of like you're doing the same thing. On one side of the world you have the pool uh, type, which is data consumers synchronously uh, get data from the data producer. And the basic tools there are, for instance, the, the it, it Turbo in Java, or it's also compared to JavaScript, or you probably have it in, in many languages. This is called also the interactive programming world, where you are uh, interfering with other components. You're, you're really like grabbing from them. On the other side, which is the R Rx, is the push world, where the data producer asynchronously gives uh, data, pushes data to its data consumers. And it's called also the reactive uh, uh, paradigm, where um, other components just react to the producers. And, and your basic tool here is the observable stream. And it's, it's, this is a very challenging thing sometimes because you really need to change your mindset completely of how programming is done. Now, why would someone want to do this? Why would someone use reactive extensions? Uh, the, the nicest thing I found was separation of concerns. Back to the basic Excel example. The cell A does not know about cell B. And that's what's nice because then you can uh, focus on making cell A as, as nice as you want and when you look at A you just know okay this is related to that and you don't need to think about other stuff. Then cell B uses cell A. That, that's, that's the beauty of it. And this idea is, is very uh, good for making architectures in, in all, all kinds of sizes of architectures because when you have separation concerns you have modularity means you have you can replace components more easily which means you can change your whole technology stuff. And then also the functional style of writing pro uh, programs where you have observables, these uh, entities as inputs or outputs of, of each other and they, they depend on each other and it's really like a functional style of programming which is in a way cleaner. Uh, there are also some very nice operators for asynchronous error handling which totally beat what I, I think there is for callbacks and it, it really gives you more power for, for errors in asynchronous world. Also, uh, of gains you can get added to concurrency because these observables, you can just say like th this runs on that thread, this runs on this thread. If I can give you a basic z example, just think about the Excel sheet. One cell runs on one thread, the other cell but they can be kind of talking to each other still. Or they can run in totally different uh, environments as well. Uh, Rx is very good for the front end where you have all kinds of events, input events of mouses and keyboards, uh, interaction and then notifications, all kinds of things like that. But it's not only for the front end, it's also for the back end. In fact, the creator of Rx, Eric Meyer, he was uh, the cloud programmability leader in, in Microsoft. So he was highly involved in uh, the cloud computing tools they have there. And also the Netflix APIs are, are entirely uh, Rx-based. So for instance, you can serve observables in your API in order to uh, make your API a bit more independent of, of the like implementation. Um, I, I could refer you to a presentation by Ben, who is leading the Netflix uh, backends. And here's he, he's just giving an example how an observable can be an abstraction for whatever kind of implementation under. So you can decide to do the, the work like immediately, or you can d decide to work it on some thread pool or multiple threads or, or whatever you want. So the observable is, is a good abstraction for for these situations. As I said, uh, Netflix and Couchbase use this kind of approach. And it also makes a lot of sense for uh, 
real-time big data an 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 analytics where you can have one metric that kind of works like an Excel sheet. So it just observes these other cells and it reacts accordingly. So when they change, I, I, this metric or, or score or calculation will change accordingly. You don't need to like explicitly go updating scores here and there. And this is the kind of the idea. There is Rx for JavaScript, Java, Scala, .NET, C++, etc. There's also for PHP, I, although I don't think that's so common. And hopefully there's going to be Rx also in your software. Uh, thank you, and um, there's also questions. Expect a question from you. <laughs> this also fits into the thing uh, about like microservices uh, with smaller components that don't be There exists a comparable one called Reactive Cocoa. But it's highly inspired by RX. So, yes, iOS, iPhone, and, and Android. Okay. I mean, Windows Phone. Yes. Um, who of the developers have uh, heard of uh, reactive programming before? Not even you, uh, Matthew. I'm familiar with the concept, um, but I just wasn't aware of the technique. Ah, okay. Cool. So this is like loop with black list for the water generation. There seems to be a sort of an overlap with function programming. Yeah, yeah it's all functional methods. So. Um, Yes, although there's quite a lot of side effects, so I would say it's people have been trying to categorize it as functional, but it's just functionally inspired, or yeah. you try to write functions that normally are pure <coughs> and these kind of things. But there are plenty of side effects, so it's not completely functional. So no Lisp implementation very soon. Uh, sorry, Timo. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. Give a, a big hand of applause for, uh, for Andre. You might be wondering what